Hey guys, it's Steven. Uh, welcome back uh, to the uh, water jet project. So today is Saturday, August 19th, uh, and I've got some uh, couple updates here. As you can see, I'm back with uh, the always asked for safety shoes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, so what do we have here? So we're back in the pretty much the same spot. Uh, that we were before. Uh, I have adjusted um, these lines now, so these lines are pretty well bottomed out now. Um, yeah, so these lines now I shouldn't have any issues with. If anything, I need to choke up the clamps a little bit. And we are attached to the larger compressor uh, out in the garage, so I have a very long extension to get out there. So let's talk about basically what happened. So I decided to dump the idea of doing a weld. I just thought that I talked to the vendor that was going to cut it, and we just thought that it was going to be uh, too dangerous. So I found a nearby vendor that can bend high uh, thickness wall tubing. This is uh, 83 thousandths wall, quarter inch outer diameter. And he was able to bend it very, very precisely to have it meet up with the cross that is designed for this type of application. So now I have, I don't, I'm not gonna have any weak spots. I'm gonna have a nice smooth bend, so lower pressure loss here and lower pressure loss here because it doesn't have a corner. And then also I don't have to worry about weld protruding into the center diameter of this tube. So this is still a very, very smooth and nice bend right here. So. That's what I have here. Very, it looks very, very good on the pump. On this side, this side I have a plug. So I have a plug shoved in there so it can't come out this way. And then I have these two tightened as far as I can. Now it's difficult to tighten it because of how where these are located and they may not be bent per, super precisely. So it's very difficult to kind of shove them in. But right now I'm not seeing any, uh, any sort of leakage. But uh, if I needed to, I didn't have another wrench. I could put a wrench here and really crank on it. And also, I don't want to bend these. So I need to find a way to support this so I could crank on it. Crank on these nuts uh, for the plug and these two so that it is uh, uh, really tight. Now, in the final application, this guy is going to be facing directly up. But I have it facing this way so we can uh, spray the water. Right? And so I could turn on the hose. Also, I have the uh, I have the air compressor plugged into here with 60 psi of uh, 60 psi of air, and we can go ahead and check that out. But you'll see kind of from the line I have right now. I don't know if you can see it. I'll show it to you in a second when we're shooting it. But it's going way further now. So now we're going to start to get into an area where. I'm starting to get restriction because now I have two holes going into one and so the area has been decreased by uh, 4x or, uh, or 8x anyways um, so now I should have you know basically four to eight times the restriction that I had before and then also I'm shoving it through this smaller ID tube 83 thou so We'll go ahead and see how that goes. But before it was 83,000 through two tubes, now it's 83,000 through one tube. So we have uh, decreased the area quite a bit. Anyways, so let's go ahead and shoot it. And then also off screen, I have, we can now attach the flexible line and see how that goes and test the flexible line. So let's go ahead and uh, turn it on. All right, so there we go. I fixed that tube. Yeah, the clamp was a little bit too far back, so I moved the clamp forward. Let's go ahead and turn it on again. So now you can see I got a pretty strong beam now. And this is actually kind of hurting. To, it's got some power to it now. So you can see it's basically going all the way to the shed now. So probably with uh, as I go up I'm gonna try to hit that back retaining wall over there so that's what we got a very strong stream let's see uh, let's go here let's see how it's affected when I open the valve for the air we're 
still not getting much not enough restriction as you can see not really any change so we go back here and look at it again at the base I think also the uh, pressure is not quite high enough let me go bump the pressure up there okay. all right so that was that was uh, actually 50 psi always on those regulators when you bring it down it's hard to tell uh, what it actually is so let's see this is 60 so yeah still not enough uh, restriction for uh, this guy so let's go ahead and stop the video here and let's put on the uh, flexible line let's see how that does let's see if that doesn't have it has any clogs or anything in it it's very very old now obviously but yeah everything here is looking good no uh no um uh leaks or anything like that and also it's now starting to have some uh Now starting to have some kick on it and this is just with 60 to 80 psi of uh, utilities so uh, we need more uh, restrictions so let's go ahead and load this on and we'll talk about the next steps all right so here we are with the uh, the hose attached so this is actually the first time I've ever fed water through this hose. Now in actuality, I probably should have done that when uh, I could have put this cross, once I had this guy adapted, I could have put this cross here and fed it through. But that would have been half the pressure, but that's okay. So then over here I have the brick to hold down the loop here. And there's the end looking straight down okay there's the end took the cap off let's go ahead and feed it some water let's see what she looks like nice and you hear you hear it a little pop so this little pop at the end might be some uh, restriction in there and you could actually kind of even hear I have a small leak on this right side fitting, but that's okay, I'll tighten this clamp up. Uh, you can actually hear the water, you can actually hear the water going through the pump now. Flowing through. But obviously this is way more of a feed rate. And it does feel like it's less, uh, less force here uh, than it was before. So we are getting some pressure loss through the line because of the uh, velocity, it has to do with the velocity and the diameter of the equation. And so when we, uh, when we actually put the orifice on, it will not have uh, nearly as high as the velocity. The velocity would be way lower. So uh, the water in here will be barely moving. So the pressure drop should be uh, nearly negligible. So uh, we do it, but we do have pressure drop through the tube but it is not dripping at the cross it is dripping at my water inlet uh, i need to tighten it a little bit more but yeah all this looks pretty good and you'll see here that even though i'm way closer you could tell the pressure drop that's why i'm doing this is even though i'm way closer i'm like another foot closer i'm not even hitting the uh, the side of the shed there so uh, we definitely have some pressure loss here. Also, it's not quite as high as uh, the other version, but it is it is pointing slightly up. So, yes, we are getting some pressure loss on the interior, also around this uh, coil down here. So that's where we're at. Let's go ahead and shut this off, talk further. You can see that I'm getting some fresh water leakage on this right side here, this right side, so I'll have to tighten that a little bit better. Anyways, so what is uh, the next steps? So next steps are I need to create the, the last two parts. So uh, the parts that I need to create are the 
So from this flex tubing, so basically we're past three quarters of the way to getting to the cutting head. So from this flex tubing, we need to come to the 90 degree adapter that goes into the cutting head, right? And once it gets into the cutting head, uh, then we need to have the that 90 degree adapter be able to seal against the orifice. Now the two biggest issues is on these two components here. So one is this tube right here is to figure out exactly what this taper is because the manufacturer high lock will not say. I'm sure that it's some sort of standard that I probably should be able to find. But uh, I'll, I'll figure that out. Anyways, so to be able to seal this and have an elbow come in and this guy seal and then have it come down and seal into the orifice, right? Another option that I'm looking at is to have them uh, be lapped to each other. So have the two be lapped, have this, uh, it's kind of difficult here because this is basically flexible. So it might have to be this guy has to be lapped into that adapter. And then the orifice has to be adapt, uh, lapped on the other side. Let's go ahead and get the orifice so we can talk about it. the orifice and cutting it. Alrighty, so here is the 5,000's orifice, 5,000's orifice. And here is the cutting head with the 20 thou mixing tube. So let's go ahead and put the orifice in there. So I may have this orifice sent to metrology. That's also another option. Have the orifice and the tube sent to metrology and have that figured out with metrology. Or orifice goes in there and the hole like that. So I need to make an adapter. I think this is M14 by one and a half millimeter or something. So I need something that threads in here, just like that nut. So I need to make a part that has a nut, Oops. part that has the, uh, the nut and the collar. So I need to make a collar like this, collar and a nut. And the big nut will go in here and there'll be a tube, a large tube, just like this. That's what's going to seat on the orifice. So I'm going to have a large tube that seats on the orifice. And then it's going to have a collar on it, just like this. And then the gland that goes down in there. This is the gland. And the gland goes down in there and shoves it into the orifice. And then it has a 90. So it goes up like this. And then 90's out. And then the tube, which is the flex line, the flex line goes into that adapter. So that's what I have left. So technically it's two machined parts. It is a, well, so I'm going to make it such that this guy is off the shelf. And then this guy is probably going to have to be made. So this guy is from Hylock. For my tube, I'm going to make sure that this um, collar goes onto the Hylock tube. Sorry, I'm going to buy a Hylock collar. And it's going to go onto the adapter, the threaded end of the adapter that has this attached. So it's basically all going to be one piece. This guy is off the shelf, and then this guy is machined to with this custom thread to shove it in there. And then on the back side, it just has a, a standard uh, collar and uh, gland to seal the flex line into that spot. So that's basically what we have left. And then once we do that, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have be able to be capable of doing water cutting. So we cut stuff with water, and then we have to start to work on the garnet. Now the issue with the garnet is I have to get 220, 220 grit garnet, or 220 mesh garnet. So I have to get 220 mesh garnet, and it's very, very difficult to source in small quantities. So I'm gonna have to deal, I'm gonna have to make a deal with, uh, with some of the manufacturers of garnet to try to get some uh, 220 mesh garnet uh, because there's not a lot of sellers online that sell the garnet at um, smaller ratios because not very many machines use it the standard is 60 to 80 uh, mesh so for this machine the pressures that I'm using and the flow rates I'm using I'm going to use finer mesh which is going to give me a lower uh, flow rate uh, not a lower flow rate but a lower feed but a finer curve so Pretty excited about that so uh, that those are the next steps 
in this project. So in order to do that, I may need to send this guy and this guy to metrology to have the uh, taper of this inspected and then the taper of this inspected so I can match it. And even then, if it doesn't seal, I'm going to have to send it to uh, lapping and have them lapped together. But that's okay. So that is uh, where we are at on this uh, build. I'm thinking it's probably going to take another two weeks. I have some uh, Maker Fairs coming up so in October. Hopefully I can get this done by maybe the end of August, early September and be able to have water uh, water cutting ready and then start sourcing the 220 garnet and start printing the hopper to feed to this guy and then I have to start uh, building the uh, gantry and the bucket the reservoir system and uh, from a couple uh, from a buddy that has the Omax Protomax uh, the Omax Protomax is 18 inches deep so uh, we'll make something that's 18 inches deep and as wide as my travels, which is uh, the plan travels are two feet by two feet So that's basically what we are looking at here for the next steps on this project. So uh, Let's go ahead and get let me get started on that and uh, We will go from there. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next update or next video later